And we are on the air. Good afternoon and welcome to the show that makes a cooking show look like a freak show. Anyway, this is the Sports Box. The only opinion that matters is right here. I am Mike Galetta, a.k.a. Hampton Mike, along with my partner, Brian, the Ranger of Tar. Brian, how are you? Why don't you make a cooking show and make me something to eat? Yeah. Why do you, you always ruin my flavor over here? You always, I would love some flavor gotta, for dinner. You always got to cut. Anyway, today we have our quest for previews for 32 NFL teams. We head out to the sunny West Coast to talk to a team, to talk to a guy about a team that's made strides and moved, but still follows them and still keeps us updates. He is the man in San Diego when it comes to real estate. Let's talk to him right now, Leo Rodriguez. Leo, what's up, my man? Hey, how's it going, guys? Oh, it's beautiful. This guy's going to make flip, flip and flop look like a, you know, <laughs> like a kid's show or something. Anyway, let's talk to Leo. Leo, uh, well, first, let's uh, go to the usual. Brian, stat me. Let's talk Chargers. San Diego slash Los Angeles Chargers, first year in L.A. this year. But last year, to close out San Diego, they finished 5-11, and fourth place in the AFC West. Did not make the playoffs. Uh, offensively, they were 14th overall in the league, uh, buoyed mostly by the eighth-ranked passing attack. Uh, they're struggling on the ground, only 26th, uh, ninth most points per game. Phillip Rivers continues to fight time, uh, almost 4,400 yards, 33 touchdowns, although he had 21 interceptions, I guess that's to be expected. Um, Melvin Gordon, really a bounce back year in his second year. I think a lot of people wrote him off and he made them pay for it. Uh, a hair under 1,000 yards and seven touchdowns. And due to some major injuries on the outside, their leading receiver was Tyrell Williams, over 1,000 yards and seven touchdowns. Average defensively, uh, 16th total. They were better against the run than the pass, 10th against the run, 20th against the pass, but they were in a lot of high-scoring games. They allowed the 29th most points in the league. Um, in the draft, they went wide receiver, took Mike Williams out of Clemson, 7th overall. They also added Forrest Lamp in the second round to help that offensive line, but I want to start there, Leo. So, unfortunately, what we know now is Lamp's already out for the year. That's not going to be good for that offensive line. Uh, what are you hearing right now as far as Mike Williams goes and if he's going to be a, a part of this team this year? So, as far as I've heard, you know, Mike Williams is having a positive recovery, so surgery right now is not really something that anybody is thinking about. Um, they're hoping that with some proper rest and, you know, if he keeps up with his physical therapy, that he should be playing in the season by week four to week six is kind of what I've heard. So he will be in there, um, and right now they're just kind of taking their precautions, you know, having to sit on the preseason and not trying to rush anything because, I mean, you know how, how delicate backs can be. Sure. So we're, as we're going through the Los Angeles Superchargers, uh, the wide receivers, you know, you, you talk about Keenan Allen coming back from an injury, Terrell Williams, uh, Dontrell Inman, Travis Benjamin. Uh, you know, the guys that are here that can do the job, my concern is is Phillip Rivers. You, you know, Brian opened it up by saying he's fighting time over here. There's nobody in the offing to take over this spot when Phillip Rivers decides to hang it up or even hopefully never gets an injury that way. You have Kevin Kelly Clemens behind him. Is there any talk um, with the Chargers about who's going to be the successor here, or they're not worried about that at the current time? So no talks about the successor yet. Um, you know, Rivers, fortunately, you know, knock on wood, he's been injury-free pretty much his entire career. Yeah. Um, so I think it is time that, you know, we start looking at a successor um, because the backups we have right now, I mean, they just wouldn't be ready to go in game time. But, I, you know, kind of rolling the dice, he's been the one player that's always been healthy, so hopefully we get another year like that out of Phillip Rivers and maybe the next upcoming draft class, I mean, you know, Leo, to your point, he hasn't missed a game in 11 years. That's pretty rare for anybody in, in the NFL, so I mean, that, that's definitely a point taken. Another veteran um, who's interested coming into this year is Antonio Gates. So Antonio Gates is 37 years old. Missed a little yep. bit of time due to injury here and there, and I think that this one of the and there were quite a bit of surprises for this team last year. But one of the big surprises was the emergence of Hunter Henry. Hunter Henry ended up with actually more touchdowns than Gates as the second tight end. And I know in a lot of fantasy circles there are some questions as to you know hey which is the tight end to be buying into for the Chargers, especially after Henry's big year last year. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, are we is this going to be a timeshare or are we? Are we retiring Antonio Gates too early? What's your thought there? See, I, I mean, I was in that same bubble last year, and I actually ended up putting Henry on my on both of my fantasy teams that I had just because, I mean, 
do. I mean, the film doesn't lie. He's more athletic. He's younger. He's faster. Has good hands. Uh, I think the only reason why Gates is still part of the Chargers is just because of that chemistry that he has with Philip Rivers. So I honestly see Gates really only being a red zone scenario tight end or when we want to run two tight end formation in the red zone. Outside of that, you know, I mean, the guy's been incredible for the Chargers, but, you know, the gas is running out. You, you definitely can tell that he, he's not the player he once was. We're talking to Leo Rodriguez, our Los Angeles Chargers affiliate for the Sports Box. Leo, you talk about the defense for this team, and, you know, we talk about Joey Bosa. He came in, he had, you know, the year that he did last year, I think he's going to have a lot better year this year. I think he's in tune with the team, and he's going to get better and better. Um, this secondary, is, like you said, the defense looks good the preseason, but what's preseason? The, the secondary is a little shaky, I think, with Trevor Williams back there. You're bringing over Dwight Lauer from Indianapolis. Uh, you talk Jaheel. A D back there, and Casey Hayward. Has this team ever replaced the big kind of cornerback, or excuse me, safety that they had in Eric Weedle when he was here? Um, is this is this going to be a, a trouble spot for their defense this year? I think the biggest thing is going to be injuries. Um, you know, last year, I mean, Brett went down, Adai went down. I mean, if we can keep everybody healthy, I think it'll be a good enough defense to at least be competitive. And that's really what it's going to come down to. But so, you know, bluntly answer your question, no, there hasn't been a, a replacement for Eric Weddle yet. Um, so hopefully one of these guys can step up and, you know, really make an name for themselves this season. And the talk of camp right now is the, is the play of Michael Davis, the rookie out of uh, BYU that they've brought in. Do you think he can crack the lineup and start before the season? Um, I think he can. I mean, if he, if he keeps playing the way that he does and, you know, continues to show growth throughout the last week of preseason. I don't see why not. One thing I want to touch on, too, I mean, obviously, you know, Rivers has a nice complement of weapons offensively, and I think that due to injuries the past couple of years, the Chargers have found receivers that have filled the void really better than anybody thought that they would. But if you look at them yeah. at the running back position, I mean, obviously Melvin Gordon's second year was a hell of a better than his first year, and he's back on the map, especially in fantasy circles. But I guess my question is, from what you saw last year, how much of what Gordon was able to do was due to Danny Woodhead's injury, and now obviously he's off to Baltimore. Um, is what was was there a, a coincidence that Gordon's breakout year came when there was nobody else to run the ball? And do you think that there that Rivers is going to miss a guy like Woodhead, who while he didn't really play last year that much, was a great you know out of the backfield catcher, gave him the offensive dimension that not a lot of offenses have in the league. Yeah, I, I mean, I think the biggest thing is that we became less predictable. I mean, every time Woodhead was on the field, you could almost guarantee it was going to be a little dump-off pass, a screen play, and then Melvin would come in and it's like, okay, you're running the ball. So now that, you know, he took more of the workload and was in for more plays, I think it just made us less predictable. So he might go out for a route, even though it's not really his forte. It keeps the defense honest, which I think that was one of the biggest reasons why he was able to be more successful and rhythm, you know, running back talk about getting into the rhythm of the game. So I think all of that, you know, compounded is what kind of helped Gordon have such a great year. Just a quick note, Leo. Um, you know, usually we talk about the draft, but the only thing we can say about the, the uh, Los Angeles draft is, are you a little surprised that they went Mike Williams at that spot? Are they just trying to help Philip Rivers out and make him comfortable, or do you? Do you really see them going in a direction? Because I, I, I don't see that as, as being a good pick with Mike Williams. He's a good player, but I think Chargers could have addressed some of the needs, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, I, I, I'm so shocked by the pick, especially, you know, I mean, our receiving core alone is pretty injury prone with Keenan Allen. Yeah. Um, and then to take another receiver that, you know, he had just fractured his, either broke or fractured his neck. Um, a couple of years back, so I, I was extremely shocked that they picked them, picked them just on the injury history alone, and how the back issues are coming up. So, you know, I definitely would have picked a defensive player, or you know, even an offensive lineman. Um, but yeah, it, that that was very interesting train of thought. Um, a lot of the analysts down here say that you know this is probably one of Rivers' last year, so let's go as many weapons as we can. But, you know, it's fair to see rookie wide receivers make that much of an impact anyway, so I'm still a little confused by that pick. Well, we, we, we both kind of thought, even if you go back to our mock draft, um, 
you know, we thought that they would absolutely address that defense because it really was yeah. uh, a stumbling block for them last year. And to go to a position that they have, so, that's actually a position of strength. That they can afford to lose a guy like Keenan Allen yeah. and still not even miss a beat off offensively, I think is really interesting. I mean, I, and I don't know if they had their eye on Jamal Adams because the Jets took him one pick before. Um, I don't know. I mean, there were some guys that they that they passed over that I think that they might regret over time. But, you know, again, if, if they're trying to make Rivers, I guess, as comfortable as possible in the twilight of his career, they want to get as many weapons as they can because I guess that's their best shot. Well, Brian, to Leo's point, too, you, you talk about that injury injury plague wide receiving court that they have. They brought everybody back. Yeah. They got oh, rid of yeah. no one. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not like, they, you know, this guy's been hurting you for a couple years. This guy's been hurting you for one or two years. He brought everybody back and still took like waves. Yeah. So a that, lot, a, a lot high. I, I mean, the receiver as a whole went I think higher than anybody thought that they would. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I agree. I don't know. I just think when you got a guy like Marshawn Lattimore that was there. Yep. Um, yep. You know, even Malik Hooker who went a lot lower than yep. we thought because Adams fell. I don't know. Um, Leo, before we get to the schedule, I, I know that they, they played they, they played a game or two now in the preseason at the stadium. Um, I know you're still in San Diego. Is, is there a lot of um, angst and Hard feelings, you know, I mean, obviously there's probably some Dean Spanos dartboards, but I mean, is, is the fan base in San Diego still going to support this team, or are they the jilted ex-girlfriend at this point? You know what? I don't think, I haven't talked to a single Charger fan who has yet really made a firm decision. Wow. Um, <laughs> I, I think right now it's still very weird. I mean, you still have sports caps just on the San Diego Chargers on accident sometimes. So it still hasn't really sunk in and it doesn't feel real. Yeah. I think, to be honest with you, I think every San Diego fan is secretly hoping for a little bit of failure. And then, you know, with some time, I think we'll all grow to, you know, it's new. the colors that, you know, yeah. we support our whole life. That wound is fresh. It's open. It's, it's you know, you don't know what to do with it. What right is now. with California football teams? Moving around the uh, state here? And there, I know, just, I don't... L.A. hasn't made a team before, and I, I don't understand why they keep bringing it back. They keep saying it's a huge market, but they keep bringing a team back down to keep down. Anyway. So, Leo, we look at the schedule for the Chargers, and, uh, you know, I, Brian, I'll tell you, I like to look at a murderer's row, which is a three- or four-game stretch where the Chargers or whoever team is going to have a rough stint, and I'm looking at it already. It's right before the bye week. Talk, starting in week five, where they're off to New York to play the Giants. They come back, and, you know, the division they're in is tough to begin with, but then they play Oakland in Oakland. Are home for Denver, but then they go back to the East Coast to play the Patriots, and then they have a, a thankful bye week. After that four-game stretch, I mean, I think after the four games in the beginning of the year, this Charger team is either going to be beat up and worn out or playing halfway decent and, and you know, playing well. Do you agree? Um, yeah, yeah. No, I think our schedule is incredibly difficult, and most of it has to do with just being in the AFC West. Yeah. Um, so Chargers definitely have their work cut out for them because, I mean, if you look at that AFC West, I mean, it's not, you know, that's definitely the last place that has to be hard to put them above anybody else. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, they haven't, I mean, really, for, for them to have a viable season this year, Leo, it really comes down to the start because, you know, they have three straight home games after, they start off at, at, at Denver. They've played well at Denver in their history, so that's not necessarily like, oh, that's definitely going to be a loss. But they get a couple teams at home three in a row before that murderous row stretch you pointed out, Mike. Yeah. They got the Dolphins at home with no quarterback. They got the Chiefs at home with no quarterback. They got the Eagles at home. Who knows? So yeah. they have a chance to maybe even go 3-1, and 4-0 and oh out of the stretch, and they're going to need it because that next four yeah. games, that if, if they win two, that's a huge win. It really is. Yeah. No, I absolutely agree because that four-game road stretch right there, that's going to be that's going to be a real doozy. Yeah, and that Eagles game coming off the Eagles the week before play Seattle in Seattle, so that could be a, a tiring game for them. So we will see. Yeah, um, and they they go to the East Coast, Brian, this year four times. Yeah. Out of their eight games, they go far east. I mean, they can't obviously go I mean, west, but they go far yeah, east and, four times. And that's the thing. There's four one o'clock games yep. for the Chargers, and it, you know, historically, east West Coast teams traveling east playing at essentially ten o'clock Pacific yeah. is not a recipe for success. And the teams that they're playing, Mike, I mean, the Giants and the Patriots. Okay, I mean, that's in and of itself a problem. But then the Jaguars are a massive mystery. The quarterback issues, of course, and then the Jets are that should be. Well, you know. this statement to Leo is probably going to make a lot of sense, and I'm sure he'll agree with me. But for this year, the Chargers, they have to, have to win the games they're supposed to win. Yeah. They cannot lose any game that they are not supposed to win, like that Miami game. They're at home. Miami's coming east. 
dead quarterback. They got to win that game. They somehow lose that game. It's going to be a long year for the Chargers. Leo, do you agree? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, that's the thing that's been playing the Chargers for, you know, past couple of yep. seasons. They're yep. really throwing away the game in the fourth quarter. I mean, yep. it, it, you see it in the first, first three quarters, and it's like, wow, this is a really good team. And the fourth quarter, it's just like, ah, they're the Chargers we know. Yeah, and, and they just kind of let you down. Yeah, and that goes back to our point where they should have drafted probably defense and, and gone heavy in the draft this year instead well, you know, of going wide receiver it, first, I think. It, it's such a Jekyll and Hyde team. I'm going to go to extremes here. You know, the Chargers went into Atlanta week seven, and they beat the Atlanta Falcons yeah. who won the Super Bowl. Yep. And then later that year, in week 16, they were the only team in the league to lose to the Browns. Yeah, a, yeah, that's a, right. A, yeah. a, a, a loss yep. so bad. The game you're supposed that it, to win. A, a loss so bad it caused the team to move. <laughs> That's how bad the left loss was. Pissed Leo off, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I mean, the other, uh, I mean, they ended. I mean, they ended with five straight losses last year. Yeah. At one point, they were one, two, three, four, five, and I guess five and six. I mean, yeah. they were they weren't dead by any stretch, but they dropped yeah. five in a row to end the year. That's that's tough. Yeah. So, Leo, to follow all that up, we're gonna put you on the spot, obviously, and ask you about the team's record. Where do you think the Chargers are gonna finish this year? Oh, man, as a fan, I think we're going to get nine wins. But being realistic, man, I'm going to go put it at six. Uh, okay. That's still an improvement from last year. It is. Let's see. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think we should win two more games than last year. That's not asking too much. Okay. So six and ten. I mean, it, 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 you got to win that Browns game, Leo. I don't want to have to talk about next year how you guys lost to the Browns because that's just not. Yeah, yeah, that's that's that, yeah. That was brutal. That comes to minus three, man. That's no. That's no oh God. Should that's we tell good. about our Saints guy? Well, yeah, for what it's worth, uh, our, our Saints fan, James Primo, did pretty the 13-3 and record for his team that missed the playoffs last year. Um, so, I mean, yeah, yeah, you know. And, and if that does happen, Leo, keep your eye on the sports box, because if it does go 13-3, I said I would walk to Texas. So, um, so yeah, Brian's hoping they go 13-3. I am I'm rooting for that. Yeah, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. So. That's all the time we have for our Los Angeles Chargers preview. We want to thank our guest and always friend, Leo Rodriguez, out in San Diego. We are keeping on the Chargers for us. Leo, thank you very much for getting on and giving us some time, my friend. Hey, absolutely. Anytime, guys. Uh, see, see, only here at Sports Box do people love to come on and give us advice. That's well, because we, we're, we're bringing great content to people. Uh, we uh, we're, we're bringing fans from all over the country yeah. talking about their teams. You're getting it from the sources. Absolutely. And Lee will always tell you, you can always get us to social media if you need to. Of course you can. We're on YouTube, of course, and you want to subscribe to that channel today while you're watching us. And, of course, social media, Twitter and Facebook, both at Sports Box Show. Make sure you're part of the crowd. Should I start singing the Los Angeles Supercharger? They gotta be all right. I don't really know what they're gonna do with that. To be honest with you, no. I, I really hope they bring the powder blues back. That's a, yeah, no, no, that's well, yeah, actually, powder blues I can deal with. Yeah, yeah, that's what we'll see with that. So thank you very much for watching. Remember, at the sports box, the only opinion that matters is right here. Thanks for watching. See you. This episode of the sports box is brought to you by Mike Up Entertainment and DJ Mike Villardi. For all of your event planning needs, make sure you contact Mike at 609-864-5925 and tell him that you saw him on the Sports Box. One, two, three. Yeah. Don't forget to subscribe.